In this tutorial, I'll introduce you to the Rubrics tool, which is an excellent way to ensure standardized assessment and marking. It allows the teacher to create their own rubric, which can include grading scheme and criteria that are appropriate to their assessment. The students can see how they'll be assessed ahead of time, which allows them to prepare their work to ensure the best results. Once students have submitted work, it's very, very quick and easy for the teacher to mark and provide feedback to students. The results are automatically tallied and entered into the grades, and the student sees immediate feedback about their marks and any comments that you might have applied to their assignment. So here I am in Moodle. What I intend to do is actually create an assignment first, and then create a rubric by which we'll mark that assignment. So let me first scroll to where within Moodle I'd like to place the assignment. I'm going to place it in this section here. So I'm going to click Add an Activity or Resource. I'm going to choose the option which reads Assignment and click Add. And now I can commence creating my assignment. I'm going to give it a title. Now what I tend to do at this point is hit the Expand All button. That effectively opens up all the sections below because I know that I'm going to need to review many of them. I'm going to leave the availability settings as they are for now. I do expect my students to submit a file, so that setting is accurate. I'm going to scroll down. Now I personally favour giving feedback to students, so I always turn feedback comments on. And I'm going to now scroll down to the important section which talks about grades. So the first thing to decide is how you intend to grade this assignment overall. I'm going to choose a grading schema and in this case I'm just going to use the default of 100% but choose a schema that's appropriate to your assessment. And here's where the magic happens. Under this grading method I'm going to select the rubric method of assessment. I'm now going to scroll to the bottom of the page and hit save and display. Now because I've chosen that rubric method it provides me an additional screen at this point. I can either define a new grading form from scratch or use an existing one as a template but in our example I'm starting from scratch, so I'm choosing this first option. Now it's at this point we start to actually create our grading form proper. We give it a title first. We can give it a description should we wish to. And then down in this rubric section is where we actually define how we're going to mark our students. First of all, what the criteria for the marking is and how we're going to score each of these criteria. And it's here where you get to specify your students what you expect in order to get the maximum possible grades. So let me give you an example. This might be about um, uh, style and formatting. So an unacceptable performance would be does not use style and formatting. It could therefore be used as basic styling and formatting. And perhaps our gold standard is that they use Microsoft Word style and formatting tools. You might notice to each of these criteria we can give a points value. I'm happy for the demonstration just to leave these as default but you could have weighted assessments where you're giving more marks to particular criteria. I can add additional levels here if I needed to just by adding the add level. You'll notice now I have another column. I don't actually require this for the demonstration so I'm going to take that one away. And then we can continue to add additional criterion. So our next criterion might be spelling and grammar.
So we're on the home stretch now. We can scroll down the screen, leave everything as it is, and hit save rubric and make it ready. So we've now effectively created our assignment and the associated rubric. What I'm going to demonstrate now is I'm going to, in another browser, log in as a student to show you the student experience. So I'm now logged in to the same course as a student. I'm going to click into this word processing section, which is where we'd added our assignment. And I'm going to click on the assignment itself. And this, I think, is a really important screen for our students because they actually get to see the rubric ahead of time. So they know how to prepare their assignment in order to get the maximum marks possible. They can then go ahead and add their submission. They can click on the Add Files button, upload a file, and select the appropriate file from their computer. As they scroll down, they can preview their assignment submission and if happy, they hit Submit Assignment, accept the plagiarism statement and hit Continue. So that's it now from that student's perspective. I'm going to swap hats again. I'm going to return to this subject now again as a teacher and show you the marking process. So if I refresh my browser now, so now I can see that there is one piece that has been submitted and that needs grading. I'm going to hit the View Grade All Submissions button. I can see now that there is a piece of work that's been submitted for grading and I can click on the little Grade button to edit it. At this screen as a teacher you can get details about the piece of work that your student submitted. You have the file here that you can download and view. And then lower down is where you actually get to record a grade. And this is where the payoff is. That early work that you've done in creating the rubric actually makes the marking process very much quicker. Because all you need now do is to click the boxes that represent the marks that you want to give. And then, if appropriate, you can give feedback to each of these. So. In addition to giving feedback to the specific items, you can give overall feedback. And then you can save changes. So the actual act of marking is now very, very quick for you. The advantage also is that that mark now has been automatically recorded in the Grade Center. And it's also done an interesting thing. It standardized that marking. We mentioned that we wanted out of 100%, and so it's taken that rubric and standardized that up to 100% on our behalf, which is really quite clever of it. OK, let's swap hats one last time and show you that student experience again. Let's see what this now looks like to our students. So I'm going to switch browsers to where I'm logged in as a student. I'm going to hit my refresh in my browser to notice the changes that have happened. It now states to me that this piece of work has been graded. And as I scroll down, as a student, I can see through the highlighted sections the particular marks that I've got. I can see the individual feedback here that, I, that the teacher entered in. And I can see the overall mark here and the overall comments as well.